If you want to run an OSR game, an old school Renaissance game, you need to understand what an open system is. If you don't get that, you're going to have a hard time running a game and for it to be fun because it's really not going to feel like an old school game. So what is an open system? Well, I first learned about the open system from this book. Dave Arneson's True Genius, uh, written by Rob J. Kunst. If you don't know who Rob is, he was uh, one of Gary Gygax's um, protégés, you might say. He was at Gary's house the night that Dave Arneson and Dave Meggery brought the Blackmore game to Gary and showed him what fantasy role-playing games were. Dave figured out with his friends in Minneapolis, this idea that Rob calls the open system. So what is the open system? The open system is something, is one piece of a tabletop role-playing game. The tabletop role-playing game has three pieces. The open system, the closed system, and the, the construct, the, the, the mental construct of the game that we all sort of hold in our head, the, the setting. So the closed system is like any game that you know. It's the rules, it's the procedures. If you're playing a board game, then that's the, the rule thing, the rule pamphlet that you get in the board game. If you're playing uh, a game like Swords and Wizardry or uh, Old School Essentials, that's the stuff in the book for the most part. The, the dice procedures, when do you roll for surprise, when do you roll to attack, when do you roll for damage, when do you roll saving throws. All that stuff is the closed system. The open system is all the stuff that you bring into the game in your head. That's the movies you've watched, your life experiences, the time you went camping on that river and got rained out because there was a torrential downpour. All those experiences and ideas that you have in your head that you bring to the game table is the open system. Think of it like a cup of tea. The cup is your closed system. It's fixed. It doesn't move around really. It's You take the tea bag or the tea strainer and you fill it full of whatever tea that you happen to like. The films that you like the books that you like, the stories that you like, and then you put it into that tea into that uh, cup. Now, the, the strainer is permeable. It lets some stuff out. It doesn't let everything in. There's still, there's still a, a, a barrier there that prevents you from, from going crazy, but the tea infuses the water the system, the setting, which is inert until the players get there and infuse it with their ideas and their concepts in their head. And the cup, sort the, the closed system, the rules, holds it all together. So why is this important? When you go and play an old school game, but try to play it like a game that's of newer vintage, what happens is the game is, is doesn't feel right. It doesn't play the way it was intended to play because old school Renaissance games are more open than most other role-playing games. Old school game is different from a more recent game in that the more recent game relies more on the closed system for everything. So especially, let's compare it to say, fourth edition's Dungeons and Dragons, where the game tells you practically how everything in the game is resolved through a series of dice rolls, skill challenges, moving on a grid, moving miniatures on a grid, that sort of thing. With an old school game, it's almost the exact opposite, where very little is actually uh, told to you about how things are supposed to go, with a few exceptions. The way spells work, the way combat works, and that's specifically because those specific problems had known solutions, because 
Gary and Dave had played a bunch of board games and miniatures, miniatures war games that already solved the ways that were satisfactory to them about how to resolve those issues. But things like, what if I throw this rock down this well and listen to see how deep it is? Those are things that you have no rules for in most games. So the game master has to take their life experience, the movies they've watched, the television shows they enjoy, and think about it for a second and go, oh, that's two seconds that, you've, that you wait before you hear a big splash. So this is really important because if you go into an OSR game and you start asking for search rolls every time a player starts to check a room and they're going to roll a D6 and if they get a one, then they find something. Or uh, if you are constantly asking for uh, ability score checks, a roll under ability score check is a really common mechanic that old school uh, gamers use. But if you're constantly using that, that actually um, goes in the opposite direction of the open system. The open system is there for the player to describe what their character is doing. And then the game master thinks about it for a second and says, oh yeah, that works. Or thinks about it and just says, well, that probably works, but you have to roll under your dexterity on a d20 or whatever the mechanic they choose to use. But it's mostly focused on what the player does in the environment of the setting and everybody around the table is imagining close to the same thing. It's not going to be exactly the perfect, but they're going to be all imagining the same thing and thinking, well, yeah, that's how a rock would sound when it hit the bottom of a well if it was about a hundred feet deep. So we can then function in the game without using a lot of rules, without using a lot of, um, or if I'm telling you a room description and you're thinking about that room description, instead of being pulled out of that room description that the game master is giving you, you're staying in the room description and, and describing what your character does. You're saying, I lift up the rug and I, and the game master responds, you find a trap door that's hidden underneath the rug. Which compare that to a system that's closer to a, that's a more closed system. The game master might say, roll a perception check. And the player rolls a perception check and gets a 16 or whatever it is. They, and then the game master describes the to the player that they lift up the rug because they noticed a lump in the middle of the rug and find a trap door. Now, there are some of you who will say, well, I wouldn't give the player that much, uh, that much information. And that may be true. You may be doing that already. Fifth edition D&D &D is much closer to an old school Renaissance game than say fourth edition or some other uh, more recent versions of the world's most famous fantasy game. Uh, but a lot of those old habits have migrated into fifth edition and uh, it sometimes takes a little while for 5e DMs to pick up on this open uh, content, open system method of running a D&D game or running an old school Renaissance game. That's all I got for today. Thanks for listening.